meeting. Uh, I could call to order the uh, August board meeting of the Central Vermont Career Center and School Board. Um, it is six o'clock on Monday, August 14th. Do we have any guests? What's on the screen? No. Uh, review the board agreements and norms. We have that sheet. Um, so hopefully everybody's had the opportunity to look that over over time. We like them. We like them. Um, any revisions to the agenda or board comments? Hearing none and with no yes, I assume there's no public comments or correspondence and that nothing came in. Yeah. Terrific. All right. So on to the consent agenda. Um, the approval of the minutes from 6 12 23. Do I have a motion? I'll move. So moved. I move that we accept. Did somebody accept up there? Okay. Anyway, I accept the, I move that we accept the minutes. Second. Second. Uh, any discussion on the minutes from 612.2? Okay. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Um, all right. Minutes are approved. Um, student appointees to the board. We don't have an appointee now. Are we going to have an appointee this year? Abby will be working with student leadership again this year. She's our school counseling coordinator. And once they get up and running, she'll ask for students who are interested in participating. And our, our former uh, graduated. graduated and doing well. She's actually wor working up at the mall. You can get your hair done there by her. All right. And we know that soon she's going to have a barber pole out, right? Because her goal is to have a barber shop. Yes. But not. Uh, the draft board handbook um, that goes put together for us. We skipped over board goals. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, the board goal, uh, the program quality committee looked, at the, looked over the board goals that we did in, in June, um, and we thought we would pass along each one to the subsequent uh, committee. And so um, we're asking that the long-term planning goals go to the finance um, and facilities committee, the uh, educational quality goals go to the program quality committee, and um, the community engagement goal goes to the steering committee to work further on each of those and to develop the SMART goals, develop some actions, some benchmarks, and things like that. So, are there any comments, ideas, questions on that? Use to the board. Yeah, so should we put a time so that the, the, the committee will review them at their next meeting mm -hmm. and That's we can have them at the following meeting? It can be a draft form so that we have them for our next meeting. Good, Good idea. idea. Yeah, that makes September. sense. Yeah. So we can agree to put on our agenda, our committee agenda for the next committee meeting and to work on the board goal. And which will be want September to share 11th. Them in September in the full board meeting and then adopt that's them that's in October. And then, or see where we're at. Yeah. But yeah, because have them adopted by October for sure. Yeah. But if they're good, we could adopt them in right. September, right? But I like so the idea of polishing or editing or yeah. taking constructive feedback. Yeah. yeah. So we're our next, so for September 11th. Okay. Wait. We're September 4th now because we're the first. No, we're the second. We're the second. We oh, we used to be the first. first. Right. 
for the 11th, September 11th. Yeah. Okay. Um, for the board handbook draft, all ready for that. Yeah. Um, in your in your package, good uh, is included. Uh, a quite complete handbook, which will be really nice to have published and also give to new board members and older board members. Um, and a couple of things that uh, there were questions on, perhaps. Did anybody have comments or questions on the board? Guy. Yeah, I'd sent along a, a couple of suggestions to uh, Jody and just uh, wondering out loud uh, at our at our facility meeting and asked a question about whether we still have um, advisory board committee members for each program. And the answer was yes. And I'm wondering if we should not list those people and list the fact that we do and my reasoning for that is actually a couple one is uh, it's a great way to recognize people and two is i think it it broadens our constituency and probably can broaden our you know potential communication with with folks uh, but i also don't want to burden the staff with you know more stuff to do so because my my guess is you're probably talking quite a few people, but I don't know that. I think it's a great idea. I'm sorry. Yeah. Oh, it's also printed somewhere where we have where we've seen the names of all the organizations that work with our students, you know, and who the members of those committees are. Why can't we just include that in this handbook? It exists. I think it's a good idea. It does bring in a broader community and lets people know that our communication is more broad based than they might have thought. So a question just for us to think of it more broadly. So the, the handbook is a handbook for the board to, to work as a board, right? Oh, yeah. So the the so I, I agree with Guy that the committees are really important. So we should have them listed in our website, which I think they are, and make sure that they're in a prominent space. And then we could, if it's okay with everybody, we could have a link, like we were talking about, mm -hmm. have a link to the advisory boards. If a board member is curious or wants to contact somebody or whatever, you know who those are, but it's just that link because the, the handbook is for us to be right. able to access have at the tip of our hands information without having to go digging through to the website as opposed to taking you know the whole yeah yeah pasting them and having three pages to add to to the handbook right mm -hmm. and the handbook is the way that Jody has put it together it's it works great on online yeah, right yeah. so that you have all the links in and mentioned maybe that I was hoping to add some uh, Vermont School Association Right links to the different governance pieces in the job of the board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I think that's it. good. Do Instead we have to, to go? Yeah. Do we have to make a motion for that? No, no. this is all this is just a, a yeah. Yeah. So how do we make a book that works best for us? Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, I'd be, I'd be. That's that's a great suggestion. I'd be, I would be fine with that. I think it gives, you know, people an opportunity to you know, to take a broader view. Appreciate the comment. Yeah, and uh, your other question has been about the mission. And that, when looking for mission before, I had forgotten to look at our governance document that was created by the governance committee that I think you were a part of. And that was the mission for the district in that governance report. So I brought that into this. Okay, all right. Appreciate that. Yeah. Good question. Terry. Just a comment and suggestion. Um, in the handbook, which, by the way, would have been so helpful for me when I started, so I think this is great. Um, it talks about the description.
description of the board, right? And then it gets into the description of the committees. So I urge the pro program and finance to kind of come up with your description and membership kind of, it's, it's like the charter that we're working on for facilities that we could just take those charters and put them right in this handbook. And then they'd be there for mm -hmm. yeah. going forward. Excellent. Great idea. That'll work. Um, so could could I add to that that we include that as another item to send along to our committees to put on their agendas for the next either the next board meeting or the next committee meeting or the one after that? We're starting to load yeah. and you have other work to do, I'm sure. Um, and if Jody could send us what she has that describes what the committees are. Would people be okay with saying by our October meeting, we have those descriptions done and finalized? Yes. Okay, great. Great. Excellent. Any, anything else on the, on the board handbook before we move on? Okay. Uh, next item. Uh, the new required policies. We uh, we just want to reaffirm these are these are the policies that that need to be in place before the start of the school year, and so we wanted to I wanted to call for a motion to reaffirm. Uh, the two new required policies, F3, the fire and emergency preparedness drills, and F4, the access control and visitor management yep. is the safety. Mm -hmm. so do I hear a motion? So moved. Second. No second. I got a, I got a quick question. Um, and I'm assuming, I'm assuming I know what the answer is, but particularly for uh, Spalling High School students, because I'm assuming that Spalling High School has the same, you know, they're adopting the same policies uh, in terms of potentially confusing kids. I'm going to assume that Spalding and the Career Center are cooperating or coordinating the efforts around the whatever it is you need to do around these policies. Yeah, so the options-based response, we already had, the Spalding already had that, the ALICE protocols. We use the same one and we work with Lou Gaither to make sure that we're in step with them. So we've scheduled them. Obviously, sometimes we get, we all get a surprise uh, fire drill or something like that. Um, but that's definitely the case. I reached out to Chris Hennessy before we adopted these to make sure that we were adopting the same language. And he told me they would plan to adopt them as is from the state, just as all schools were supposed to. So hopefully, Juliano, that happened. Uh, they are exactly the same, and they're um, we were advised not to change anything. Yeah. Um, because it, because it's in statute. Those mm -hmm. those actual words are in statute, so we can't change them. Yeah. Okay. So we do work with the Spalding administration to make sure that we're carrying it out the same way. You can make it tougher, but you can't reduce them. Yeah. You, you've adopted them. Yes. Yep. And the other one was F4. Yep. yep. We did both. Yeah, F3 and F4 are doing yeah. together. Well, the actually. facilities, the access control is belongs to Barry. Yes, facilities. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a motion and a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor of reaffirming these uh, two policies, say aye. 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 Uh, all those. Opposed? All right, I've been reaffirmed. Thank you very much. Um, we're now on to the um, recommended policies first reading, and uh, I believe we're going to take these as a slate rather than one at a time. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to ask for a motion uh, for the first reading. Um, and do I hear a motion to approve the first reading? I have a motion to accept the first reading of the policies 820, 821, 822, 823, 824, B20, B21, and B22. All second. Second. Uh, discussion on any of these policies?
the only change should be obvious. It was an A20 and it was that change to our board meetings being the second Monday of the month instead of the first. Mm -hmm. and, and just a point of clarification, do we accept these every year? Um, we review them, we should put them on a schedule for review, and a lot of that will be in conjunction with changes that the BSBA makes to their recommended and required policy models. So this, these we're making sure that we are good with them because initially we just adopted all berries, and now we just want to make sure that this board still includes them, and then we can we can put them on more of a regular schedule. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we have a motion and a second to accept these uh, recommended policies first reading. Um, okay, any more discussion? Okay, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? All right, first reading. Uh, will we have the second reading next? Yep. Meeting, I assume. Okay, perfect. All right, 2.7, the committee reports. Let's start with, with finance. Sure. Finance committee met last Tuesday. Didn't meet, it was all sort of, we didn't meet because we didn't have forum. We had an informal conversation mm -hmm. just to make sure that we are up to date and mm -hmm. so a few highlights is that, you know, we changed our system for you know, taking care of all of our billing and how you know and continue to uh, Michelle continues to be super happy with it and hopefully the reports that we're going to be getting mm -hmm. are even more informational for us and we can ask for specifics from, from her she still has quite a bit of hours left that she can use for training, training uh, and all that transition seems to be Going well and aligned with what we would need to do. We are about to be audited as our regular audit, right? So, mm -hmm. should we use all of that? Would really help yeah. for next year. The audit will be even easier. It, that that was the biggest highlight from from the finance yeah. committee, and we're hoping to it, get everybody at our next meeting. <laughs> and we do know that there are going to be findings in the audit. We did go oh, for true. several months without a, a bookkeeping accounts payable person. So Michelle was doing a lot mm -hmm. of that and and her own job. And it's supposed to be spread out between different people. So we do have a person in that role now. Kelly moved from an admin assistant to there. And so we we put the system in place to make sure that we're doing things the way that we need to, mm -hmm. but it's gonna come out in the audit that we had one person doing multiple pieces of our finances when it should have been separated out more. No, that was it. That, I, unless there's questions, and then you you are all getting uh, all of our the pay accounts payable, accounts payable. Right. Yeah, we every school calls them a little different, but yeah, everybody's getting that, those emails, mm -hmm. and and we I put a print which you had uh, at our board meeting really, so that you have. Guy, so so Jody, why would I mean, the audit is not necessarily about how many people we have, but whether we're doing a good job with finances or not. And if we're doing a good job yep. with finances, what difference does it make if we had somebody missing? Um, just for safety and protection, it, it's if the person, um, the only person is taking care of every piece of it, then certainly money could go missing, right? Um, obviously, the audit would show that if there was something that happened that way. Okay. So, but it's just one component of they're going to check our systems as part, not just how much money we started with, where it went, and what we had left, but also what systems did we have in place, and did they meet their guidelines, the federal requirements that we have, and if not, what are, we're going to be able to say what we're doing about them, but they might have also some additional recommendations. Okay. Oh, well, thank you for that. Yeah. And I said, guys, the biggest thing about the, the audit is that any, any, there be a couple of findings for any findings they have have already been taken care of, which is like, right. they're on top of it. And then one thing I forgot to mention was like we did talk about the budget process mm -hmm. and that line, that timeline, update on the timeline, because we are going to be budgeting pretty soon again. Yeah. 
So we'll get a we'll get an idea of the timeline. Yeah, you will get an idea of the timeline at our next. Hopefully, we'll have a next finance meeting, and we, you will have an idea. And just pretty similar to last year, we changed a few things at our last meeting mm -hmm. before the summer. Yeah, just to update when we send the postcard. I think you can yeah, yeah. that. Yeah. yeah. Great. Thank you. Uh, the facilities committee. Yeah, we did. We also didn't have a formal meeting. I mean, we, we had some conversation. We didn't take any action on anything. Um, we're just going to regroup again in September. We chatted a little about the, the handbook that we just uh, talked about. Um, we didn't get any more volunteers from our first uh, front porch forum kind of <laughs> request. So um, I'll send that back out again. I kind of letting things settle down with, you know, um, some of the disaster we had recently and stuff like that. And then um, the charter, we talked about our, our committee charter and um, we are gonna have a draft one, I hope, ready for our next meeting so we can talk about it and uh, then give it to the board when we're ready. Terry, would you mind? Jody? <laughs> no, you did it. Okay. Would Terry, would you mind um, when you do put something together for your front porch farm that you send it to us? Because I would be happy to do that for yep. Montpelier one as well. And hopefully we can do the Barry one. Mm -hmm. We'll do. Okay, thank you. Great. Anything, anything else on facilities? All right, yeah. Program quality. Okay, we, uh, the, um, Jody was at an amazing, <laughs> SREB conference in Orlando and reported out on some just really exciting endeavors that are going on around the country in Oklahoma, particularly. They have tech centers at work that start outreach to students when they're in the second grade and it moves up. And during that time, they can take one of, they can explore one of those areas in the sixth grade they're aware of what the scope of all the career opportunities are. In the seventh grade, it's part of the curriculum. There's curriculum support for what they do. In the eighth grade, they can shadow three programs. There's an exploratory in the 10th grade as they begin to hone in and follow their, their goals, their dreams, their hopes. Um, Jody also reported, this was really fascinating, on beta technologies out of Burlington is working with Plattsburgh, the Career and Tech Center in Plattsburgh, and they're doing a certain kind of paint on planes that is going to become the industry standard. And they are the, there are four represent, four students are doing this. And those are the only four in the whole darn country that are doing it. And it's going to become the industry standard for the whole country. So is there a way for us to become a part of that or what and explore it further? But it's, you know, higher wages, here they come. So that's pretty exciting. And then of course we followed that with a look at, um, oh, we talked about curriculum and instruction review and Jody got this great book that has an by Steve Cottenberg. No, he's the in-service person, right. but Karen has supported it. And she was really active in the degrees of knowledge framework to begin with. And I don't remember the name of the person who wrote Eric the book. M. Francis. What? Eric M. Francis. Eric Francis, Francis M. Francis. And we talked about how that promising instruction, there's also from the SREB, they focus on PIPs, which is promising instructional practices. And so how do we merge that way of thinking so that there's going to be an in-service at the beginning of the year. And then we talked about, wouldn't it be great if they saw the video that, the, that was done with the solar and the electric working together and identifying how they thought and worked together to say, we do do that, but how do we do it in a broader way so that we're much more mindful across our curriculum 
And when we talk about going full time, it'll become really important then to for our partner schools to see that we really are looking at those elements of higher order thinking. And then we went to what we've asked everyone to do is to by October have a final version of what they think their career, what their goals are in um, for their committees and what's actionable and so forth. And that's the that's it. Right? Anything else? Any questions on that? That's a good guy. Yeah, I want to throw a bone out to the program committee. I had somebody approach me about um, starting a program that would deal with elevators. And the reason being a couple of things. Um, is, is that microphone? No, oh, I'm that one's that. Sorry, one sec. I was trying to try because that it, we're going to move to a second session after it. Like, let's turn your volume down. All right. Try again. Is that better again? Is that? Is yes. That yeah. Okay, yeah. Sorry about that. And, and no, it was not you. It was me, guy. Oh, oh, okay. The, you know, the premise is a couple things. One is, Right now, I believe, and I, I think I've known this for a while, uh, yeah. there's like one elevator uh, <laughs> person in the whole New England, number one. And number two is with the recent floods and per perhaps what the future is going to look like, which is perhaps not having stuff on the first floor, it may require uh, you know having more elevators installed. So... Just food for thought. Uh, I thought it was an interesting concept, and I just want to throw that out there. Uh, you mean Mr. Otis is still alive? <laughs> he's moved up. <laughs> he's moved up. He's taking the elevator. <laughs> um, I just wanted to share that. Interesting. I gotta imagine that elevator people would fulfill those requirements of the state of high pay, high wage, and need, and all of that. Good question. All right. I know that our building trades program, because Dimitri does um, some of the steel framing, they have built like elevator shafts before in building trades, uh, but not the actual yeah. elevator components. Terry. Okay. They like electrical students as well. They we my my son's kind of being recruited. We're trying to be recruited by an elevator company. It's really not really what he wants to do, but yes, they had and they have apprenticeship programs, I believe, through their company, and they also pay very, very well. Very well. Okay. Yeah. So yes. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Excellent. Moving up. Moving up. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> the elevator. Mm -hmm. Okay, the negotiations committee, and we are, if you look at the agenda, we are going to go into executive session later. Um, but is there anything from the negotiations committee now? No. Okay. Did we finish? Uh, no. No. We have an executive session. Yeah. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, 2.8, the superintendent's report. So I shared that um, we're going to... Juliana happened to be at the Barrytown Select Board meeting one of the same nights that I was there with Carl um, looking into an ambulance that we had proposed to purchase. They had two that there were being replaced, and so we were going to purchase, try to purchase one. And they instead opted to work with us and donate that ambulance to us in exchange for training time with our, our materials and our space. So they will, we've got a contract with them and the ambulance should be in our parking lot in the next few weeks. Great. So we will be able to simulate with that ambulance now. And if there's any change in legislation in the future that allows 17 year olds to work on an ambulance, then we could support emergency services locally that's with our own ambulance. So that's the page of the Argus. Great. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. So where they just approved it at their last select board meeting. That was our first one when we were there. Um, and it might be helpful also to note that Carl is the interim director of the Barrytown 
EMS right now because the director did after shortly after that meeting that we were all at um, and the original contract was drafted, he took a job somewhere else and they they were searching for someone. So Carl is doing that. He promised me that he will be back in the classroom at the start of the year and he is not leaving us. Oh, great, great. <laughs> He's certainly been busy. Um, what else? I think Guy has a question. Go ahead, Guy. Yeah, just a quick follow up to that. I, I'm assuming, and I, you know, I'm sure I know. I think I know the answer to this, but it, it, the agreement doesn't violate any of our uh, agreements that we signed with the school. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, things like, well, I don't know. I mean, I, I, you know, like having an ambulance parked in the yard or having, you know, the town use the facilities for, you know, for training. No. Uh, no, it doesn't. Yeah, it's all good. Thank you. Thank you. I, I thought yeah. it would be, but I just wanted to ask. Yeah. Um, we're lucky to have finally found someone to replace Kelly as admin assistant, because most of you know our admin assistant, Kelly Bellavo, moved into the accounts payable payroll position. Um, she's been doing a great job of actually doing both jobs most of the summer. Uh, previous to her, admin assistant came in and did it support for two weeks but on uh, next monday our new admin assistant liza haviland will be starting we're really excited to have a full staff downstairs you already know that christina and i attended the sreb conference i've included a draft of the program of studies in the past that was sent out created and sent out in january which for me didn't make sense when we were already done with our first round of admissions at that point. So our students start applying on the same day as we have open house in November, which is the Thursday before the Thanksgiving break. Mm -hmm. And so we wanted to make sure that this year, the program of studies went out in advance of that. So it should be ready in September to distribute across our sending region. And then students will be able to work through that process of visiting the school if they haven't, applying once the November date comes around and, and moving forward. So they have access to all that information in advance of applications. Is that only an electronic copy or is there, is there a print copy of that as well? Right now it's only electronic. Um, there is a, we do a print copy and we deliver it to our sending schools. Great, because last year there was that around the counselor conversations about yeah. wanting something tangible because they missed it. Which they shouldn't have. And we we got both the Perkins grant approved and our time grant continued to cover for half of the program salary and benefits of our instructor for design and fabrication. Great, uh, Guy. Yeah, a couple of, couple of dumb questions, um, just curiosity questions. So I was at uh, Lotus Lake Camp with my grandkids and. I think this is the second time I've noticed a CBCC van parked there. So is that a van that you have donated or is that a, uh, a collaborative thing or? So when the first summer that I was here as director, um, yes, this would be the second, yeah. No, this would be the third, I don't know. Oh, yeah, yes. Last summer, um, or last spring, 2022 spring, Beth Allen reached out uh, about our bus. It's actually the bus, not a van. Um, it's a multifunctional school bus, so it's not the yellow school bus, it's white, and asked if they could rent it because the place that they normally rented from had doubled their cost. So it went from 4000 to 8000 Oh my God. Um, and and they weren't guaranteed that they could have it that summer. And I forget who we had to work through at the time, but we made sure that they had the insurance that would cover it. And it has really low mileage. It's only used, it was only used by our natural resources program. So we struck a deal with them and they rented it from us last summer. And she asked if they could do it again. And we don't use it in the summer. It makes sense to get it used. Mm -hmm. So we did it again. So each year they paid us five thousand dollars to use it for the summer. That's great. Yeah. Great. So the other question I have, Jody, uh, will will be in finances, but I might as well deal with it now. 
uh, it's not a question of the finances, but I noticed some fairly intricate uh, pieces of equipment were purchased. Can you speak to those? Because I think they're they're important for us to know from a program perspective. I'm thinking of uh, culinary and the, and the woodworking program. So the woodworking machinery, anything related to that is like, we got a CNC machine for the design and fabrication program. You may remember, Guy, that when we originally opened that program, our expectation was that with a partnership with Norwich and they were supposed to pro provide all the equipment. And um, they have not done so. In fact, they've, they've opened the program. Our students have access to dual enrollment for two courses in the full year, um, so six credits. But they did not contribute any equipment. And so we got additional Perkins funds that we use to purchase the equipment for that program. So anything related to woodworking, CNC, that sort of stuff tends to be what's going into the design and fabrication program because they're not supposed to just be focused on uh, sculpting of different materials, but also some design, 3D, 2D design, and some, some CNC work so that kids from that program could go into local granite industry, for example, they could also go into um, some advanced manufacturing, gives them multiple options. Um, trying to look at what the culinary was. I'm thinking that there was probably our cutlery always has to get sharpened because mm -hmm. they use it. But I believe they had a piece of equipment that was set for replacement or fixing that was probably in here. Yeah, you know, thank you. Thank you for addressing that. I think it's and the reason I asked that is I, you know, I kind of want to be on record of, of like saying, you know, we're trying to keep up with stuff and trying to mm -hmm. provide the, you know, the best and the, you know, to the brightest. So thank you. Yeah. You can see the transition from systems, the the different methods of reporting out. So there's a check register report from the old system and then the new system, which is a little bit clearer mm -hmm. and currently shorter. Anything else on that? Report. Um, did you have more that you wanted to talk about the, the program of studies or just your plan for it? Did you I just to wanted to share the plan for it and the reason that you're seeing it now. And then if there were questions or comments from the board, I'm happy to hear them. Does anybody have any questions about the actual program? Yeah. You, you had a couple of first, you find a couple of those like on and writing because yeah. your draft that you were adding, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah, okay, yes, yeah. yep. Yeah. yeah, I was editing it. Oh, you were editing? Yeah, yeah, that's what I figured. Yeah. I just... So if I came to your office one day at some point, I could pick up a nice shiny copy of this. After, after the first week of September, after probably. The first week of September. Yeah. Great. Or I can bring it to the September 11th oh, board if it's ready. That'd be great. Hi. Okay. Sorry, Lyman. I, I've, I I've got have one more question, and maybe you addressed this before I got here. I noticed Orca Media is on uh, my site tonight, and um, I'm assuming they're taping the meeting, which is great, because I was going to ask the question tonight whether any of the local public access stations have gotten access to our meetings. And so, and maybe they've been on before and I haven't noticed it. So am I just waking up or? <laughs> no, they reached out last week um, and asked if they could uh, record our meetings. And I said, absolutely. And uh, unfortunately they didn't have a staff member who could be here with a camera tonight, but they're recording from the Google Meet, which is great. And hopefully they'll be joining us for all of our future board meetings. So that that's great. I really appreciate that. Now, do they 
because our coverage area also includes uh, CBTV, I believe. So do they, are they going to share that with them or are they talking or? Do you I know? believe it's going to be shown on the TV, um, but I can't fully answer that because I'm not sure I, I understand it. Okay, we might might want to check into that because I think uh, you yeah. know, we have a different coverage area, but I really appreciate the fact that they're going to be on it. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I have a, a question. I just want to know what we're going to be doing to ensure that all students are reading at the level that's expected in order for them to comprehend the content in the different graduation, you know, to meet Vermont proficiency based indicators. You're getting that question from the program? Yeah, I'm just looking at each one, like um, we're looking at graduation, and if I'm looking at um, reading and culinary, baking and culinary arts, there's a level of proficiency to be able to read and comprehend it at 10 to 12, but it changes, you know, based on, on the level. So I'm just wondering how are we kept apprised of that? Good question. So we, this is shared with our sending schools and we do a lot of work um, with counselors to try to help them understand where a student needs to be and with us case managers um, at all our sending schools to try to help them understand where students need to be to be successful mm -hmm. because our applications process is blind and we don't right. we don't want to know who's right. on a plan who's not right. and as you know because you've been on this board for a while we have about 40 percent of our students are on plans which right. is much higher than any of our sending schools right. and so we try to make sure that everyone understands and that they're setting the kids up for success mm -hmm. and they know how to support them i can speak best probably for U32 because I used to work there and because I'm, I know the case manager there really well who is assigned to our students. And she starts working with students in the middle school because it's right there. Right. And with their teachers in setting, this is what they need to be able to do to access this program if that's really their area of interest and making sure that we build that into any of the programming they might have. We can't guarantee yeah. that they're at that level. No, of course. We can provide some accommodations for students to make sure that we're supporting them as much as possible. It's part of why we have a literacy interventionist yeah. as well. It also seems to me that part of our, if we look at what Oklahoma is doing, for example, mm -hmm. and they're starting with second grade, what are we doing? You know, where's that work and how are they reporting out that their reading levels are going up because they want to ensure that by the time that student, I mean, I know how hard it is to make that happen. Right. I just didn't know if it what the ongoing level of communication was. But thank you. I'm just, I'm just curious on that same note. So the like eleven three on uh, automotive technology is that a is that like a national reading level standard like a Lexile score turned into a a number or is that? It's just a grade level. It's not it's a Lexile. Just, it's just a grade level, and yeah. so we've agreed as the state of Vermont or whatever what an eleven three. Well, there's a lot of variability of there because of lexiling, and the state is saying they want everyone to have a lexile number, but this flies in the face of a lexile number. Right. So, okay. and lexile gets messy. All right. Sorry, I digress. I already got us off track with that. So mm -hmm. um, for account, uh, so we're good on the program of studies. Accounts payable for July. We started looking at it. Yep. Um, do you have anything else to add to that? No, you will get emails from these as soon as they, so every two weeks you should get an email from Kelly Bellavo that shows that. And I believe she's emailing everyone. So you'll be up to date on what's happening mm -hmm. through our new system. It was really easy for her to send that email that way. Um, and if the board chooses not to have it done that way, we can figure that out. But right now that's, that's the plan just to keep you posted on where's the money going. Okay. Great. What are we buying? We're getting ready. So we're buying lots of stuff to get ready for okay. students to come back. Which is on what day? The 31st. 31st. Students are here the 31st. Maybe it's the 30th. It's the 30th. The teachers are here. Teachers come back on the 23rd. New teachers are here on the 22nd. 
Teachers are back on the 23rd. We have on the 24th, we have our third round interviews for admissions. So there's still more students that we could potentially take in wow. if a program has um, opportunities. And then the first day is Wednesday, which I think is the 30th actually. Wednesday is the 30th. And that's true for all of our sending schools. We all align our calendars and have the same start of day. Excellent. And all it right. begins. Any any questions or comments on the accounts payable before we move on? Okay. Uh, so we're now going to go into executive session for negotiations. Um, and I would like to ask for a motion. Uh, I'll move that the board enter into executive session for the purpose of negotiations as premature general. Public knowledge will clearly place the board and the association involved in a substantial disadvantage. I have a second. A second. Uh, all those in oh, discussion? No. All those in favor of going into executive session? Say aye. 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 All right. We'll go into executive session. Uh, we're going to go um, into another space. Steph, do you have it? Do you have the motion? I do. Uh, first by you and then by Deanna. So we are all set. Okay. okay. Thank you.